Marion, do you think Ballyhay are a good moral compass for protesting in Ireland? Yes, I do. Um, what I've learned down here, I mean, I've marched with them twice. I've talked to a number of members from Ballyhay. I've sat down with them. I helped to facilitate a visit to the European Parliament about a year and a half ago where they met Sharon Bowles, who was the chairman, chairwoman of the uh, Economic Committee, who agreed with them that this was an odious debt. And certainly some of my thinking has been shaped by the people of Ballyhay. I never thought I'd say that about a place in North Cork, but it's the truth of it. And I believe that their issue in regard to the promissory notes is something that is doable if we put on the pressure. It's not going to be easy and it's going to require significant leverage. But we have some leverage. We are not nothing within the EU. And this is something that our senior politicians have to take on board. We've done everything that was asked for us. At the time, we were the backstop to prevent contagion right across banks in Europe. Now it's time for payback. It's past it. But at least now it's time for payback. Okay. Um, do you think uh, the Promissory Note deal is a good deal that Michael Noonan has got for the Irish people? Well, if you're just to look at the figures, it's a better deal than what was there. But on the other hand, it's not a deal at all, because we still have the debt to repay. And growth levels are flatlining across the EU. OK, Ireland is growing, but that's temporary. If, if we hit a bump in the road, anything can happen. So the idea that, you know, with inflation and growth, that those debts would, would diminish over time, that isn't happening. The old orthodoxies are out the window. So we have to, we absolutely must, get that debt lifted from our shoulders. And as I said earlier tonight here, I believe if European citizens were aware of the odious debt that's on the shoulders of Irish people, that there would be a great deal more sympathy across the Union for our situation. Okay. okay. Um, so do you think the EU are a friend or a foe? I think at different times the EU has been a friend and I think right now if they don't sort out our debts, our odious debt, a debt that should not have been put on our shoulders. It was at the time, as I said, to prevent contagion in the European banking system. We've shouldered it. We've done everything that was asked for us. Now it is payback time. And if the EU doesn't come to a situation where we can get rid of this debt, it is no longer our friend. Uh, what are your thoughts on TTIP? Well, at the moment we don't know where TTIP is because the Americans don't seem that interested in negotiating, but we have to wait and see. But overall, or globally, there's a few things I'd like to flag. Number one, we haven't had transparency in the process up to now. In other words, we don't know what's happening. Our new commissioner, Cecilia Malmström, has said that will change, so we await to see. But I suppose the big issue a lot of people are concerned about is something called ISDS, which are investor state dispute mechanisms, which are put in place to basically, in a sentence, allow large corporations take individual governments to court if those governments put in place legislation that they believe prevents them from investing in that particular country. Now, Jean-Claude Juncker has said, and I agree with him, that there is no need for two, the US and the EU, which have highly developed legal systems, to put another legal system in place to deal with something like that. I, I know that this is going to be a huge issue in the Parliament, and I honestly believe that if the Commission have any sense at all, and if they are going to respond to European citizens and their very legitimate concerns that they will take ISDS out of the agreement. After that, we have to wait and see what's in the agreement. You know, not all agreements are bad. Some are good. Ireland survives because it trades. If we can increase that trade, we do better, but not at any cost. Okay, and very last question. Would you have a message to the people of Ballyhay? I think the people of Ballyhay should be proud of the movement because you know as somebody said here tonight it's never easy to step off the pavement and especially how many weeks ago nearly 200 weeks ago now you know i'm sure lots of people looked at them and they said are they out of their minds you know what are they at they, they you know they're going nowhere and they're going nowhere fast but they believed in their hearts and they believed passionately that what happened was wrong and should be changed. Okay. And 
change. They have stuck with it and they've knocked, they've banged on every door and they've got everybody possible that they can to listen to them. And I believe that the likes of Bally Hay says no will have an influence and I hope a very significant influence in helping to rid Irish people of the debt. They may not be at the negotiating table now, we have to wait and see what happens in the future, but I think even by alerting people, by letting people know the full circumstances of what is happening, I think that will inform decisions that Irish people take when they're voting, etc. And I think that may lead to a difference. We have to wait and see, but well done to them. And uh, as I said, it's difficult to take that first step. But not only have they taken the first step, they've stepped it out every Sunday, hail, rain or snow. And I'm very pleased that tomorrow, for the third time, I'll accompany them. I'll see you there. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three.